I'm William Nozak, and today I'm going to talk to you about competitive research. What is competitor research, also referred to as competitor analysis? Here at the office, we call it a, a CI, competitive intelligence. We do competitive intelligence reports for clients when they need to know something about what their competition is doing, what social medias they're using, what content they have on the website, what blog frequency and strategy and length are they using. There's a lot to be found when doing a competitive intelligence report over local competitors, regional, national, and even international. So it helps us keep our brand um, competitive because really we kind of need to know what other people are doing. We look at it as like a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now we call that the digital SWOT. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Um, what are the threats and opportunities? And how can we exploit these or at least bridge the gap? Process involves analyzing marketing strategies of rival companies. We're gonna look at the social media frequency, what they post. We're gonna look at their YouTube. We're gonna look at their LinkedIn channels. We're gonna look at anything that a competitor uses and figure out how we can institute that into our strategy to strengthen what we do. So the three major benefits would be to understand the market, identify gaps in the market, and plan for the future. Steps to competitor research. ID your main competitors. This, this can be tricky, okay? Not only are the people in the local market your competitors, really with, with the digital age, anyone that sells what you sell and can service people in your area, they are competitors. So we really wanna look at the other local companies. If we're talking about digital marketing services, we'll look at the other local marketing companies, what they do, how they do it, what their strengths are. We also want to look at people that are running ads at our potential clients. Those are also competitors. And what they're doing from an SEO front to an ads front to a social media, maybe even try to get in their drips, see what they're doing from an email marketing campaign, how often they strike people when, um, when someone gets into their funnel. You know, are they hitting them five times a day? What are they offering them? We want to ID these people so that we can really research what they're doing because I promise you if they're doing it, it's probably bringing leads uh, that turn into sales. So analyze your competitor online presence. This is done in uh, say a Google Sheet. We're going to put the client in there. We're going to use different programs such as Screaming Frog, Hrefs, SEMrush. Anything that's a third party that gives us access to or at least looks at someone's data we're gonna use that to make a uh, kind of like a mood board you would see with these different things. We're gonna make a report and then we're gonna analyze it from what we have and what do they have. So it's this, it's this time where you gather a lot of information and then you try to make decisions off of that information. The more information we can get, the more complete the picture comes, the better decisions we can make, especially if we're new and we're not the incumbent, we're trying to attack that market and take market share or we're trying to get more market share. We really wanna gather as much information, use as many sources as possible, try to put together a complete understanding of what they do and what they don't do, where the gaps are, where the opportunities are. We're also gonna check their online reviews. Uh, what do people say that they do well? We certainly wanna do those things well. What do, say, what do people say they don't do well? We certainly wanna make ads uh, targeting those pain points, saying that we do those things well, if we do those things well. You find out a competitor continually gets a bad review about something, certainly those clients are eventually gonna be searching someone that does those things well because it's a pain point. They wouldn't have left a one-star review or a scathing review about it. And also what people continually say this person does well, we certainly don't wanna leave that off the table. When it comes to market research tools, like I mentioned, Ahrefs, Screaming Frog, Open SEO tools, um, there, there's so many different tools that give you different slices. Really, you wanna get a slice of data and just keep trying, look at like a loaf of bread. Uh, each new tool is gonna give you that piece of bread to put together a loaf. And then we wanna look at that and look at all sides of it and look at the color and the texture and say, this is probably the strategy. How can we take these components and put it into our own strategy? Tracking your findings is important at all levels. At the beginning, what hypothesis we make, and then we wanna do those things and we're either gonna prove that hypothesis or we're gonna break that hypothesis. A lot of digital marketing is hypothesis making and hypothesis breaking. Think about it from a scientific perspective. The more of a chemist you can become in this, the better you will be. 
make a hypothesis, do something about it, and break that hypothesis as soon as you can. So what are the benefits of competitor research? Uh, it's gonna help you understand the market. Uh, you wanna keep your prices competitive. In some markets, end users are more price sensitive than others. People are not always price sensitive and usually the better product, the more service, people get a little less price sensitive when they know you're gonna give them incredible customer service. So we wanna have a deep understanding of current trends and fads. Fads, right, they turn into, fads turn into trends, trends turn into uh, major changes in the market. We wanna identify gaps in the market. When you're doing your research at the beginning of a, of a business or you're the first, you're a person going into a new company that never has had a digital marketer, there are certainly gonna be some digital gaps. So we wanna understand what these other people, younger companies, older companies, what they've done, what they have presented, what strategies they're using, and then now we need to say, okay, these are potential gaps that we have from our digital strategy, and what human resources do we have to make it where we can also do those things? Can't usually do everything out of the gate, and you wanna do those things that really lead to more impressions, that lead to more clicks, that more lead to more leads, that lead to more sales. That's really uh, how the C-suite's gonna look at it is, okay, you're doing this, but why? We're doing this so that we can increase our impression load, which increases increases our click load, which increases our lead load, which then leads to more sales. That's really how that funnel is always going to work. So when we're picking and choosing gaps, if we can't say, hey, we got to limit this uh, whole gap, all gaps, then we have to pick and choose gaps that are eventually going to lead to more sales um, in the short and stay on top of the long run strategy. And then planning for the future. Markets are always shifting. Buyers are always changing what they we need and what they want and how they want it delivered. So we can study how people have presented their offerings in the future. Just use the Wayback Machine. Pull up somebody's strategy and how they presented that offering a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and see how they've pivoted their offerings. It really will give you a, a great understanding of kind of maybe how the market's moving, especially if they're a really successful business. The less successful, the less money they're making digitally, the less trustworthy those pivots become. At the same time, if they're successful, you have to think that those pivots have brought them onto more money from the digital footprint. So we're taking these things individually as a grain of salt, but trying to build a complete picture to make smart and better decisions digitally. When we ide identify the direct competitors, we really want to try to figure out who's trying to offer the same thing to potential clients, whether they're uh, targeting a, a whole the whole batch of buyers or a certain niche of buyers. And then we want to study them. At the same time, there are going to be some indirect competitors who may compete for the same dollars. We kind of want to know some things about them as well, but we want to track and understand how these direct competitors that are going to take dollar bills off of our bottom line, potentially because someone chose them, or our clients maybe they find a gap in our service and they find our competitor is targeting those same clients saying, hey, we don't have this gap in our service. We really wanna understand them, ID them, and stay on top of them, what they're doing and what they're doing well. And that way we can carve out our own value proposition and be our own company, stay within who we were set off to be and pivot or iterate as quick as we need to, to really fit in a space that uh, we can make cash flow and grow a business over the years. So in analyzing your competitor's online presence, you're gonna be looking at their keywords, their organic rankings. You're going to be studying the SERPs. You're gonna look at Bing and Yahoo and how the, what they have there. Do they have Bing places? Are they using a GMB? What schema markup are they using? How are they connected to connecting to and how are other websites connecting to them? So how are they outbound linking? How are they uh, receiving internal links? What are the key volumes, keyword volumes that they're targeting? What's their difficulty or what's the strength of their website against the, the um, links that they have? And so can we directly compete with them on these keywords? What are those keyword volumes? Are those tofu, mofu, and bofu keywords? Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. Do they have a range of content that targets tofu, mofu, bofu? And who's got the best blogging strategy? You know, what are they writing about? Are people sharing it? Is it winning in Google? Is it potentially bringing them clients? What's the social media strategy? How often do they post on Facebook? 
Facebook? What do they post about? How often do they post on Twitter? What are they posting about? How often do they post things on Instagram? How are they using LinkedIn? We wanna know how our competitors are using these softwares and these services, and we certainly wanna make an educated guess on it. are they A, wasting their time, can be the case, or B, do we think that's leading to leads that eventually turn into sales? And it, depending upon the lifetime value of your client, whether it be five years, 20 years, or one year, and what the value of that client is, certainly will cause us to pivot some of our strategies or abandon them altogether. We wanna know how quickly our, our competitors' websites uh, open up. Uh, we wanna tools.pingdom the pages, GT metrics the pages. We wanna use softwares to understand our own trade-offs. If we have a video in the header, in the jumbo, there's a video there that loads. It's gonna be larger than an image. It's gonna require more time and more resources. So if you, if you have somebody that's trying to load your website in a valley on their phone, it could cause them to uh, leave your website because it took three seconds or four seconds to load and people are super impatient. So you have to think about those things and those trade-offs. How are your competitors doing it? And do we, we, do we also wanna put a video or videos or uh, extra images and how many images and calls do we want on a page? And what are the competitors doing? If our site's loading in three seconds, the competitors are loading under a second, we have a problem. I certainly always wanna shoot uh, for a page to be under 1.5 load time, under two megabytes when possible. And so we're, we're looking at these things. And so, and how does the site look and perform on the mobile? Since Google is indexing all sites versus the mobile version, how are we presenting? Are there easy call to actions? Do we have a static header that stays as people scroll, scroll down so that they can always get to a CTA or get to additional things that maybe they're not finding on that page? We really wanna make it so people can get to the other resources and, and not bounce and stay a long time and, and then do business with us. This is just a small batch of things. There's many, many things that we're looking at and we'll go over those things in this program. So you should always keep an eye on, on PPC strategies and you gotta run your own PPC strategies because what you find is CPC complements organic. We'll find that there are words that we pay for that have a high click-through rate that bring us lots of clicks and leads, but maybe our organic strategy is, competitor, uh, is um, positioned against keywords that aren't having such a great click-through rate. We wanna weave that information back and forth. We wanna use that complete picture so we do need to spend some money in Google, and if depending upon what your competitors spend, depending upon what that cost per click is, and for some people it's really high, well, it's because the LTV of that client's high, and your competition is willing to pay that money. So in the information gathering, you can't put too much time into this. Again, things we're looking at, do they have a blog? Do they publish eBooks? Are they giving away resources and using that to attract leads? Are they producing case studies, which always do really well? Are they offering webinars? Do they have a podcast? Um, there's some great strategies we'll talk about with podcasting. Are they making videos? Do they have their own video department, a, a, a green screen, and just where they're lightly editing videos? I can't tell you how little time it takes us to edit these videos you're looking at right now. If a competitor has that set up, that's an advantage, that's a strength. We need to look at those things. How often do they make blog posts? Is it once a week, once a month? How long are they? Are they a thousand words? Are they 4,000 words? What are they? What topics are they covering? What length is the content? What uh, different mediums are they putting it in? Are they writing a piece? And then do they also have a podcast audio and a video on YouTube that they share on Facebook? How many ways are they repurposing it? How often do they repurpose it? Is it evergreen so it can be used forever? These things we have to identify. And when we're gathering information, we're collecting tons and tons of data. I can't tell you how important uh, the Google reviews are. And, and Dusty, when he gets into some of the ads copy, he'll tell you how going through competitor reviews, the positives and negatives, it's gonna really give you valuable information on what their strengths are, maybe what their value proposition is, maybe what's important to them and their clients, and then the pain points that they're continually not addressing. Certainly if someone continually gets bad reviews, we could really try to make a product offering that targets those clients and get that cash flow to our um, top line. So we wanna look at that information. And then if we're gonna make an ad campaign that targets that competitor, we would probably use some of that in our ad copy. Um, if somebody continually is slow at delivering or doesn't you know, keep their word, 
we want to try to fashion some ads and target it though that company and people that are looking for that service we're going to use this in many ways one we need to understand do they respond to the reviews you have to respond to reviews what are they saying what categories are they listed in with their gmb is their nap all consistent when you're looking at your competitors you're looking at these things and we're going to use this data to, data to attack the competition we use this to really fill it in how often do they get these reviews what's the frequency right we don't want to we don't want a um, a review dump we don't want like 50 reviews in one day we want this trickling this consistency are there gmbs and their address within their target market we certainly want the gmb as close to the target market as possible and we get, we'll talk more about this on how franchises do these things. So reviews, very big part of what you're analyzing that is good and bad about a competitor. The market research tools you'll, you'll use would be uh, Google Alerts, Google Trends, Google Keyword Planner, and, and Google Ads. You're gonna use backlink checkers like Ahrefs, SEM Rush. You can use Screaming Frog to take a look at your own SEO technical audit what you have on the site, what's busted, how many 404s, how big the images are, what the metas are, H1s, H2s, all of that. When you're taking a look at the competition, you also have to have something to compare it against and that is your own stuff. And so we can put our competitors in our own website and say a Screaming Frog or an audit tool, see what we have, what they have, how they're presenting to the bots and end users and really try to bridge those gaps. Make sure that we're exactly where we wanna be or continue to iterate and reposition. You can use Quora for some things on what on some, what some questions are. Google Analytics is a no-brainer. You want to have your own data. What's better than your own data? Remember, all these data points, they're really just trends. Nothing is the Bible. We use them to compare others versus us with the same tool. We wouldn't compare Google Analytics and Ahrefs data. You know, I've got data from me and Analytics. I've got data from a competitor in Ahrefs. We would never do that. We always compare Ahrefs data on us, Ahrefs data on them. Google Analytics, we don't have that on our competitors. So we really wanna use that as feedback for ourselves. Search Console, how well we're doing in Google, super important. This is gonna give us tons of information on pages to help us continually make these pages uh, evergreen. A lot of tools, there's just a couple listed here. And so we're always gonna track our findings. We wanna have this listed in a Google Sheet where we've got baselines established. How are we doing? Are we improving? Are we declining? There's also places in Google Analytics where you can mark your analytics on, hey, we made these changes on this date. And so you can see when you've done something that's maybe had a negative effect. Oh, this happens all the time. This is not, you're never gonna get it right all the time. It's part science and part art. And so really you wanna have a place where you keep information or when someone makes those changes or what changes they've made with dates and person, you can make those um, changes in analytics. We'll show you that later in our program. Uh, but we wanna track what we've done. If we make wholesale changes to H1s and meta titles, H2s and ad content, and all of a sudden our lead volume increases, we kinda of wanna know what we've done. At the same time, if our lead volume decreases, we wanna know if we've changed the positioning. We need to go back and look and see if we've got less traffic and less clicks on certain keywords. That tells us those keywords are very valuable for us and we don't wanna lose that information because we're continually in this uh, motion of progress, making things better. Sometimes in an incomplete form, it can bring more leads. And, and that's what we don't wanna lose sight of. We don't wanna lose sight of something that works to making something better and we slightly tweak it and it produces less. It's all about production at the end of the day. That is competitor research. We'll certainly show you how to use these tools later on in the program. We're gonna always go into in depth on this. We'll show you one of our CI reports. And so you can see how we've used multiple tools to really look at where a competitor is. And then when we're trying to make a scope or a statement of work, for a potential client, how we say, hey, look, these are all the things we're gonna handle in the future. This is how we're gonna move the needle for you. And in a year of working with you, we'll see how far we've come and look at year two and how much money and how far do you wanna go and, and talk about what's next with a client. And so again, I'm super glad you guys are here and we've got a lot in store for you. So see you in the next module.